Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. It's fantastic to have you here. We're working on a Viking sword. We're hoping to make a really fabulous piece. I've got a lot to learn. We've got some mistakes to overcome. And on today's episode, we're going to be making the pommel cap for the sword. So it's a pleasure to have you here as we keep cracking on. So as you know, we've been using the Swords of the Viking Age by Ian Pierce to help guide us along as we go. And I do quite like the shape of this pommel right here. I quite like the shape of it all. And as you can see, we've been taking good inspiration from it. This particular sword dated second half of the 10th century, so that's appropriate to the rest of the blade in terms of how we've been inspired as we go forwards. And this one was found in a lake near Sörberg. Sörberg Castle in Denmark. And the general shape is that of a Peterson typology type S or a Wheeler typology type 3. Here's the Peterson typology. There's the S. Here's the Wheeler typology. There's the 3. And of course, it's not exactly either of them. It's a variation and a mix of both of them. The typologies roughly categorize things, but Obviously, swords were made all over, and the fittings were also made all over by all sorts of different hands, and so all sorts of slight little tweaks and variations came about. In short, the pommel has five lobes. The lobes at the very ends of it are the smallest, and they get larger with the largest lobe at the top. And these lobes have lines in them, and a lot of Viking swords at these intersects had twisted or braided precious metal wires coming down. And so, of course, that's going to be a feature that we include. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to cut off some steel to the right size. We're going to put it in the mill, maybe square it up, drill some holes that suit these holes, and start shaping. Guess who just snapped an end mill because the power feed was on ultra fast? This guy right here. Alrighty, so as you can see right now, we have two tapped three millimeter holes. We have a good, decent little bit of material removed from the inside, which hopefully means we removed a little bit of excess weight, and it also means that there is some space for the peened over tang, the riveted tang, to sit in. And the next step involves our old friend Blue Dicum. We're gonna get some layout fluid on this and start tracing out onto the layout fluid the rough profile in one dimension, and then we'll do it again in the other dimension of the pummel that we need to make.
ground. Now time to shape the lobes. It's roughed in, oh so very rough, but it is taking shape. This is certainly, certainly on the right track to help him make a fabulous pommel. I hope that you have enjoyed this episode. It's been a pleasure as always bringing you along, sharing the journey. I hope that if you're new, you hit subscribe. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram to stay up to date with a few little behind the scenes. Grab yourself a t-shirt like this wonderful steel buoy shirt at alexsteelshop.com and I'm gonna see you on the next episode. Bye-bye.